Hello. Welcome to today's webinar on open access initiatives from the American Chemical Society. My name is Joe Graham. I am Assistant Director in Product Marketing for ACS Publications, and I'll be today's moderator. Thank you for joining us. First, some housekeeping. In order for you to see the PowerPoint better, feel free to adjust the size of the slides on your screen by grabbing the lower right corner with your mouse. If you need technical assistance during the webinar, please look at the Help widget at the bottom of the screen or type your query into the Q&A box. If you are disconnected during the webcast, please log in again according to the instructions you received earlier via email. Please feel free to ask questions at any time during the presentation through the Q&A box on your screen, as we will be answering some of them at the end of the presentation. Please note that this webinar will be archived and posted at the same link you use to register so that you may watch the webinar again at a later date and time. In the presentation today, Dr. Kevin Davis, the Vice President of Business Development at ACS Publications and publisher of CNN, and Dr. Darla Henderson, Assistant Director and Editorial Development for ACS Publications, will be walking us through the open access initiatives that ACS is introducing in 2014. We will then use the remaining time to answer your questions. But first, for those of you who may not be familiar with the ACS, a brief overview. The American Chemical Society is the world's largest scientific society, with over 163,000 members worldwide representing professionals at all levels in all fields of chemistry and related sciences. The ACS vision is improving people's lives through the transforming power of chemistry. The ACS mission is advancing the broader chemical enterprise and its practitioners for the benefit of Earth and its people. This vision and mission influence everything we do at the ACS. ACS Publications is a division of the ACS alongside Chemical Abstract Service, Membership and Scientific Advancement, Education Division, and Petroleum Research Fund. ACS Publications is the publishing arm of the ACS publishing more than 40 peer-reviewed journals, more than 1,300 e-books, chemical and engineering news, ACS style guide, and more. ACS journals are the most cited journals in all seven chemistry categories. Okay, and with that, I will now hand the presentation over to Kevin. Kevin? Thank you very much, Joe, and hello, <clears throat> everybody. Thanks for joining us for this uh, uh, webinar discussing uh, some of the uh, new initiatives uh, that the ACS is introducing in the uh, world of open access. I'm delighted to be joined by my colleague, Darla Henderson, who I will uh, uh, introduce in, in a few minutes to go through uh, the four pillars of our open access uh, uh, program. And uh, we hope there will be plenty of time for questions at the end of the, uh, the webcast. And you can enter your questions in the dialogue box uh, at any time during our presentation. So before we get into what the new pillars of our open access program are, I suppose it would be worth spending a little bit of time uh, discussing why ACS is, uh, has decided to uh, change and modify and evolve its open access initiatives, noting that we started uh, offering a form of open access publishing to the chemistry community uh, back in 2006. We'll say a bit more about that later on. Um, Open access has really changed the face of scientific publishing over the past 10 years. As you saw on the previous slide, I've had a couple of since in uh, scholarly publishing. I was the founding editor of Nature Genetics in the early 1990s and served as the editor-in-chief of Cell Press shortly after it had been acquired by Elsevier in 2000 and 2001. And my colleague at the time, who was the editor of Cell, Vivian Siegel, uh, left uh, shortly thereafter to join uh, an outfit on the West Coast called the Public Library of Science, which is perhaps the most uh, prominent and uh, certainly one of the more successful uh, publishing uh, outfits in the open access space. Here are the three 
founders of the Public Library of Science, shown on uh, the cover of uh, a recent issue of Genome Technology, Harold Varmus, of course, uh, on the left, Pat Brown, uh, formerly a Howard Hughes investigator at Stanford, uh, on the right, and uh, Michael Eisen at Berkeley, uh, uh, the, uh, one of the mavericks of the open access field, um, uh, shown here. And Public Library of Science has, of course, uh, published a number of journals, but it's really the launch of uh, a journal called PLOS One that has really changed, I think, the face and, and put a new, a, a new light on open access uh, publishing. I borrowed this next slide from Stuart Cantrill, the editor of Nature Chemistry. It's a year out of date, uh, but this shows the impact of open access papers not uh, the volume, certainly, of impact uh, open access papers published in PLOS One uh, back in 2012. Uh, last year, 2013, PLOS One published uh, more than 31,000 articles, uh, uh, peer-reviewed, certainly, but a different flavor of peer review where reviewers are not asked to uh, weigh in on the potential significance or impact of the, of the work in question, but merely its technical merit. Uh, and there are other journals, particularly in the chemistry space, uh, shown there for, for reference. Note uh, Jack's, uh, the flagship journal of the ACS, shown in red here, uh, that publishes about 3,000 uh, uh, articles uh, during the course of the year, uh, and other journals shown for comparison. Uh, the world of uh, open access and uh, data sharing uh, and information sharing is also being impacted by the, uh, the launch of a new preprint server, particularly in the life sciences space, following the successful model in the physics community archive, the preprint server, Cold Spring Harbor recently launched uh, BioArchive early days uh, to, to judge the, the, uh, the significance of that, but that's something that we're watching in uh, some of the ACS uh, journals, some of the 45 journals that the, the society covers currently publishes uh, do, uh, do allow uh, uh, groups to submit two uh, manuscripts before peer review to preprint servers. That does not disqualify them from being published in their journals. Uh, last in this little uh, introductory segment, uh, the world of open access comes with a downside, and that is this, uh, the, the specter of predatory publishing. Uh, if you uh, run a model where you charge authors or their grant funding institution to pay to be published, uh, collecting the money after it, the paper has been accepted, uh, rather than charging institutions or personal uh, subscribers uh, to, to access the paper, uh, then it, it does open the system up to, uh, to abuse in some quarters. And uh, many of you will have seen and read the uh, Sting uh, operation that was conducted by uh, Bohannon, a very talented science writer at Science Magazine, uh, who noted that uh, more than half of the several hundred open access publishers uh, that he contacted and submitted a, a fake paper to uh, in the Sting operation late last year uh, were, were uh, duped by that or made little, if any, effort to uh, conduct a rigorous peer review uh, and uh, were eager to publish and, of course, collect the money for that. So open access is a, is a, it's a mixed bag at the moment, but uh, it's certainly, as I noted earlier, has caught a favor with uh, the life sciences community and is to some extent uh, gaining, uh, gaining currency with the chemistry and other communities um, as well. So I think in short, ACS has been monitoring these uh, developments for a number of years and is offering open access initiatives really for a couple of primary reasons. Uh, one is to uh, provide authors with publishing alternatives to traditional uh, modes of publishing, uh, particularly in cases where their grant funding institutions or their local institutions may require certain parameters for, for granting uh, open access to their papers uh, uh, within perhaps six or 12 months of, of publication. Um, and as a nonprofit, uh, large scientific society serving a huge body of, of, uh, of scientists and researchers, uh, it is obviously incumbent upon a, an organization such as ACS to be flexible and offer uh, opportunities uh, and to meet such, uh, such guidelines if they are indeed imposed by other, other groups in the community. And we also want to provide uh, authors and our members with uh, a greater flexibility and greater access, if at all possible, uh, in the uh, worldwide distribution of their scientific papers. Uh, I would note that uh, m most of our authors who publish within the ACS uh, close to 40,000 papers a year are, would appear to be reasonably satisfied with the access that uh, the ACS journals give them through their institutions, 
Uh, but certainly that doesn't necessarily apply to groups who are perhaps uh, on the periphery of the chemistry community who, who, or who may be influenced by some of the trends that they're seeing in open access and would like to have a, a greater access to their work, to their published work, uh, than uh, simply uh, institutional subscriptions may allow. So those are some of the key reasons uh, why we've decided to take a new look at open access and decided uh, and announced at the beginning of this year that we would launch uh, a series of new open access initiatives. Uh, and as I say, these are, these are initiatives that have been in discussion uh, for, uh, for a considerable amount of time. Um, here are the, uh, the four uh, open access uh, uh, pillars, and I will just uh, briefly summarize what the four pillars are, and then I will uh, welcome uh, and introduce uh, Darla Henderson, my colleague, and she'll take us through uh, the first uh, three of these. I'll come back at the end to talk about uh, our early plans for a new journal in open access that we will be launching towards the end of this year, and then we will leave uh, plenty of time for your questions. Um, so the four pillars of ACS's open access uh, program uh, as it currently uh, stands are, are shown here. Uh, the first is ACS, uh, is in, I should perhaps add in no particular order, but the first is ACS Editor's Choice, uh, which went live, as Dala will explain momentarily, uh, on New Year's Day of this year. This is a, uh, an effort underway uh, and ongoing whereby, uh, thanks to the help of our journal editors, our academic editors at all of our journals, uh, we are encouraging them to uh, flag and highlight papers that they think are of particular uh, interest and really uh, showcase the, uh, the mission of the American Chemical Society, and each of those papers uh, will be designated open access and uh, made available open access uh, at the frequency of precisely one paper per day, 365 days a year, and that got off to a, a successful and popular start, as I say, on New Year's Day this year. We've also announced uh, in uh, our second pillar a program called ACS Author Rewards, uh, which is a voucher program whereby the corresponding authors of every paper that is published in any ACS journal this year will receive uh, later in the year a, a, a series of a set of vouchers uh, worth $1,500 per paper that will be, uh, can be applied to future uh, open access uh, uh, papers over the course of the following three years. And Dahl will give you a few more details on that program. Uh, and where does the $60 million figure come from? Well, if we publish 40,000 and papers, uh, this 40,000 articles during the course of 2014, uh, and the vouchers are worth uh, $1,500, uh, you can do the math. The third pillar in our program is ACS Author, author Choice. This is a, a new and improved version of our original open access um, uh, uh, offering that uh, debuted back in 2006, whereby uh, the authors of any paper with ACS can uh, elect uh, to uh, render their paper uh, an open access uh, publication, uh, and Dahl will give you more details of that. And then last but not least, uh, we've announced uh, plans to create a new journal, a new fully open access journal that will be free not only to uh, uh, readers, uh, by definition, it's open access, uh, but also to authors. This will be fully uh, subsidized uh, by uh, the American Chemical Society, uh, certainly uh, during its launch period, and we'll give you a few more details, although they're rather uh, rather uh, few and far between at the moment as we are uh, just in beginning our search for a, an academic editor to, to lead the uh, venture. So those uh, are the four pillars of our open access program in a nutshell. And now I'd like to uh, welcome my colleague and friend Dala Henderson, and she'll give you more details on the first three of those. So Dala, over to you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for the opportunity to provide a progress report and update on initiatives that ACS has launched or is, in, or is in the process of implementing. And as Kevin mentioned, these initiatives are really designed to allow us to continue to be the trusted partner for you, our authors, and for the chemistry community. That's why we were particularly pleased to start 2014 with the launch on January 1st of ACS Editor's Choice. And this service reaches out to capture the in-depth knowledge and expertise of editors across the portfolio to identify and make openly available impactful research. The, the goal is really to showcase the breadth of ACS content and the diversity. Um, as Kevin mentioned, this is one article each day, 365 articles each year, um, and it is accessible. Um, the URL is listed here. Uh, the recommendations as we addressed come from the scientific editors 
of ACS journals from all over the world. And this is, um, you know, more than 44 journals now and um, uh, over 400 associate editors and editors. The articles are not only made open, they will remain open for um, all to access and read, and they're clearly identified. If you stumble across one in browsing a journal, they're clearly identified in the article abstract as well. So January 1st came, and with it, the first article to be featured in ACS Editor's Choice was an exciting breakthrough authored by Dr. Zing Chen from Peking University and published in JAX, um, showcasing a breakthrough in tools that allow for better understanding of sugars and their role in regulating um, biology. Furthermore, this article was actually picked up and featured by our colleagues at CNE News, and we've established a great relationship to, um, you know, to allow our colleagues at CNE News to recognize what content um, we've selected and is in the process of making its way through the pipeline for inclusion in ACS Editor's Choice. So as we looked back at the end of January and early February at our first month, we wanted to see if we'd achieved our goal of featuring impactful research that represents the breadth of content. And the results are really positive. Uh, shown here are the January statistics, and I'll add in some February numbers as we move along. Um, in January, 31 days, the articles featured in the service had lead corresponding authors from 29 institutes. Um, and now in February, we are up to, at the end of February, up to 53 institutes. And uh, in January, this represented 14 countries, um, spanning the Americas to Europe, the Middle East, and on to Asia. In February, we um, have now brought that total up to 19 countries. Uh, one uh, notable addition here would be India. And I guess what's been most experiencing, uh, most interesting about this experience is the exchange that we've had with the authors who were chosen. Um, they see this as real added value from ACS, not only by making their content openly accessible, but by featuring it and, and by the fact that they have been selected by the editors of the journal to be featured. So we're seeing this show up on people's CVs. We're getting lots of uh, thank you for, for this initiative comments from the authors. Um, I'd like to particularly acknowledge and thank the excellent participation, enthusiasm, and support that we've received from our ACS journal editors. Um, our process relies on entirely on their daily review and identification of content and, as, and on their expertise as leaders in the field. In January, we featured content from 21 of the ACS journals, and by the end of February, um, that total is at 33, as I mentioned, out of 44 journals. So we really feel like we're achieving um, breadth across the portfolio and representation to um, the chemistry community of the kind of content we publish. Okay, um, I wanted to point out to all of you the, that there is a dedicated index page. The URL is listed here for ACS Editor's Choice. And that's where once per day you'll see the new content being posted. Uh, you can sign up for RSS feeds, free article e-alerts, and you can also browse this content on your mobile device. We've done some optimization for mobile phones, um, for example, swiping to allow uh, browsing. And um, basically, I think all said, we at ACS are thrilled to be able to provide the global community with a new free article each day of the year. Now I'm going to move on briefly to talk about ACS Author Rewards. And that's the second of four of our open access initiatives. ACS Author Rewards is a $60 million stimulus program providing authors who published with ACS in 2014 with a credit that they can use to offset the cost of open access publishing options during 2015 to 2017. So central to this program is the deliverable of two $750 credits to the published corresponding author of each peer-reviewed article published in 2014. So that's two $750 credits per article. Um, and that's about 80,000 credits. We will deliver those credits into authors' ACS ChemWorks accounts. Um, those of you who aren't familiar with ChemWorks, please go check it out on our website. And ChemWorks accounts are free to sign up for and to use. The deliverable of the author rewards will be a dedicated app in the Publishing Center 
We'll make all of the rewards available in the second half of 2014, so well in advance of when an author would be able to, to use these rewards to offset publishing uh, open access options during 2015 through 2017. This is our way to give back in a significant fashion to the community of our authors as you seek to meet emerging and changing mandates from your funders or government. The third of four open access initiatives is ACS Author Choice. The expansion of this program in 2014 involves three major components. First, new and varied pricing options. Second, an ACS certified deposit program. And last, e-commerce. I'll discuss each of these components briefly on the next slides. So what is Author Choice? Author Choice has been available to our authors since 2006. It's an easy and cost-effective route to open access. Um, it offers APC discounts based on membership and subscriber status, and I'll get into that in a bit. And now we have expanded our options um, given the changing funder and institution deposit requirements so that authors have an opportunity to meet those requirements more readily. Our new choices include a low-cost ACS Author Choice Plus 12 option, and this basically provides open access after 12 months and allows for authors who um, are, are um, affiliated with institution or funder requirements for repository deposits um, after 12 months to facilitate and to make that option available more readily. And the fees, as you'll see on the next slide, are as low as $750 um, when certain discounts are are taken into consideration. We also made available last year for the first time Creative Commons add-on licenses, and we've um, further explained those here and made them available at a discount to ACS members and ACS certified deposit. Our new open access initiatives um, provide a, a range of prices from $750 to $4,000 for the basic open access. If you're an ACS member and the rate there is under 150, you can save an additional 50%, as you can see here. So ACS member prices are in the second chart, and non-member prices are in the top chart. So you can save 50% on each option that's available. On top of that, if you are an author at an institution that subscribes to all publications, you can save an additional, or you can save 25%, and there's a combined discount that's also available. We have Creative Commons, both CCBY and the Creative Commons non-commercial, no derivative works, the CCBY and CND options available. Those are for $1,000 add-on. If you are an ACS member, the price goes to $500, and they can be added to any of the options above, both immediate availability or availability at 12 months. Okay, the second of the three components of author choice is certified deposit, ACS certified deposit. With the increasing number of institutional and funder repositories, you, our authors, are now faced with an ever more challenging environment. So we're rolling out this program, and it's included with ACS author choice options. There's no additional author fee. It's a part of the service of ACS author choice options. And one of the main tasks that we take on then is handling the deposit of the final published article to selected funder, institutional, or government repositories. We see this as a way to help you as an author avoid the additional administrative tasks involved in making your own deposits. And then a little bit about documenting compliance. Authors require the ability um, to track and to demonstrate deposition of content. That's what we've heard from the community of authors. That is something that, that really is a critical need. And funders are also, on the other hand, seeking to ensure compliance with mandates. So we see this as a growing need that we at ACS want to help our authors meet. And that's where ACS Certified Deposit comes in. And for this program, we will launch an app, again, in the ACS ChemWork environment that's freely available, provides you, our authors, with a detailed transcript or list of all the depositions made by ACS. 
And, and so we see this as somewhere you, our authors, can go to, to access anytime, find the information you need when you need it. Um, say you're writing a grant or a renewal on a holiday or in the middle of the night. And this would be a resource you could access. We're looking to roll this app out before the end of 2014. So the third component of ACS Author Choice is e-commerce. And currently, um, you, many of you may already be aware of this, our process for authors involves forms that the author downloads from the web and completes and then submits via fax or email. And what we've heard from authors and um, from librarians and research administrators is using the form can be confusing for authors. It's a manual process. We see it as not a scalable solution. So we've been looking at how to solve this pain point for authors and for ACS. Uh, in December of 2013, we signed an agreement with Copyright Clearance Center to utilize RightsLink to manage our e-commerce solution. And what's shown here is a very simple mock-up that um, has been generated for our consideration. It's clearly not ACS specific, but I, I thought it was worth sharing with you to showcase the streamlined approach that we plan to take. Um, after acceptance and during production, authors will receive an email that presents them with the option to elect an author choice. Authors who click on the link will be taken to an interface similar to the one shown here, outlining the cost. And if they click on the lovely large orange button in the lower left-hand corner, they're then taken to an interface where they're asked to enter discounts. So entering your ACS member number and the name of your affiliated institution will incorporate into the pricing quote a discount. Um, and we can also look to implement special promotional discounts in the future. The other option here is that authors will be able to use their author rewards by applying the discount in this interface. So when the discounts are applied, authors are then presented with options to pay by credit card or by invoice. We understand that for some universities, payments are not being handled by the author, but by a dedicated office or research grant administrator. And we've confirmed with our colleagues at CCC RightsLink that it will be possible within our interface to support that process. We'll work out the details of the workflow and make sure that that's available to everyone um, when we take this slide. And we do plan to take this live in the second half of the year. And thank you for the opportunity to provide an update. I'm going to hand it over right now to my colleague, Kevin. Thanks very much, Darla. And uh, this is our penultimate slide, uh, just one slide to uh, give you a, an overview on the fourth pillar of our open access program here at ACS, uh, the plan to launch a brand new journal called ACS Central Science uh, towards uh, the very end of 2014. Um, we don't have a huge number of details to share on this because the vision and the scope of this journal will largely be uh, shaped uh, by the founding editor, the academic editor of the journal, and the search for that individual uh, is only now really getting seriously underway, uh, and we hope to make a, a, an announcement uh, uh, to that effect uh, in, the, in the late spring or early summer uh, as our search committee is um, uh, convened and begins its, uh, its deliberations. But we're certainly uh, looking for a, a fantastic dynamic presence uh, to, uh, to help uh, lead this, uh, this journal. What we have uh, said and what we are committed to is uh, the launch of a highly selective, uh, multidisciplinary, uh, peer-reviewed, obviously, uh, and fully open access journal uh, looking to publish something on the order of 150 to 200 articles annually. So uh, quite a different uh, feel to um, a journal that I think we've already had some questions on. Uh, obviously, JAX, the Journal of the American Chemical Society, the flagship journal of the ACS, uh, which publishes on the order of 3,000 articles over the course of the year. As an open access journal, this will, this will be the ACS's first fully open access journal. Every paper published will be open access. So not only will the articles be uh, free to read, uh, um, but uh, they will also be free to publish. We, have, uh, we will not be uh, offering or uh, implementing any publishing charges uh, for authors. The ACS is committed to 
subsidizing the launch of uh, this journal, uh, at least for the first year. And our hope uh, in due course is that we will find um, organizations that would like to partner with us to sponsor the further uh, dissemination of research. So we have no plans to charge authors uh, to publish in this journal. We anticipate that the journal will be extremely broad in scope, uh, really as befits the choice of the name, uh, uh, Central Science. Uh, many people refer to chemistry as the Central Science. And uh, we've highlighted just a few of the many uh, multidisciplinary areas, including many areas of the interface of chemistry and other fields in the biological or physical sciences uh, that we, uh, uh, that we uh, believe will be attra an attractive, make this an attractive venue uh, for authors from many communities, not just uh, people who are currently uh, regular contributors uh, to the American Chemical Society's existing journals. As I say, we are uh, embarking on a search for a renowned uh, active uh, scientist to uh, serve as the founding editor-in-chief, and uh, a, a large and a talented editorial board will follow in due course. We are endeavoring to uh, begin accepting, uh, uh, begin receiving articles for consideration for peer review uh, in the latter part of this year. We hope to begin publishing uh, online at the very end of this year uh, with a formal launch uh, in uh, the beginning of 2015. And obviously, this is not the, the last word on this launch or indeed any of our open access programs. We will look forward to hosting additional um, presentations, uh, live events, uh, webinars for both the author community and the librarian community and other people who are interested uh, during the course of the year as these plans evolve and begin to take shape. And we're obviously, whether it's uh, on ACS Central Science or any of the other three pillars that we've, uh, that Dara and I have talked about over the course of the past uh, 30 minutes or so, uh, we'll be glad to take questions. Uh, and we will move into the Q&A period now. So uh, as you've heard, uh, we have a, a Q&A box on the screen. And uh, some of you have already entered questions live. Please, uh, if you have any questions for us, feel free to enter them into the dialog box. And we've also provided contact information, both for myself and for Dala. Uh, you can contact us offline if you wish. And there's further information on the four pillars, as well as a, uh, an editorial that was uh, written by uh, the president of ACS Publications, uh, Brian Crawford, uh, in announcing and unveiling uh, our open access uh, strategy uh, that was published in Chemical and Engineering News last year. You can find a link to that article, which again has more information and Brian's perspective on our open access programs at the URL shown at the bottom of this slide, www. Oh, there's a typo there, www.acsopenaccess. Org. So with that, I think I will uh, pass the, uh, the, the phone over to Joe Graham. And Joe, I guess you will take us through some questions. Thank you, Kevin. Yes. Um, so we received a few questions uh, when people registered for the webinar. And I'm going to start with some of those questions. Um, and I will just read the question aloud and then uh, let uh, Kevin or Darla jump in to answer. Uh, first question, uh, can you clarify whether a university has to subscribe to all ACS journals in order to get the reduced price for author choice? Sure, I can take this one, Kevin. Um, Go ahead. There's an opportunity for authors to get discounts via two fashions. First is by being an ACS member, and that provides the um, significant 50% discount on any of the options. So that has no tie at all with whether or not you're at an institution that subscribes. On top of that, we provide an additional discount opportunity for authors um, who are at institutions, academic institutions, which do subscribe to our all publications package. And yes, that does mean all publications. Um, so th there are two ways that you can get discounts being a member um, or uh, being a, a, a affiliated with an all-publication subscribing institution. Okay. Thank you, Darla. Uh, next question. Which version of my article can I deposit in the repository of the university without writing to ACS? For all of our open access options, one of the items that I presented here was ACS Certified Deposit. Um, so for any of the open access options, ACS is going to help you by handling that deposit of the final published article into the repository. Um, if you're looking at a non-open access option, uh, you signed the journal's publishing agreement, Form A, for example, 
we provide the opportunity for our authors to post um, accepted works on websites and repositories under certain conditions. Those conditions are that it has to be mandated um, and that it needs to be uh, 12 months or greater and that the posting is for non-commercial uh, purposes and doesn't violate our ethical guidelines. Okay. Well, if I, if I may add to that, I also wanted to uh, give a plug for a program that we have called Articles on Request. Uh, authors may post links um, to the published work uh, using the ACS Articles on Request author-directed link. And in the first year, um, that link will take whoever you make it available to as an author um, to the article itself for free for up to 50 people. And after the first year, that um, is also unlimited. So you could post the link on your website along with your articles and utilize that as a tool for, um, for discoverability as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. Um, I am interested in learning about the impact factor, current or expected, anticipated, and uh, comparison with other journals on similar topics by other professional societies for these open access publications. Uh, let me have a go at that, and then Dala can uh, can can add to to my answer. We, if you're talking about. Uh, we obviously uh, publish uh, and, and release uh, the impact factor for all of the current uh, and existing ACS journals. You can find uh, just a simple Google search will quickly uh, pull up uh, the latest information on impact factors, total numbers of citations on the journal homepages and other ACS uh, documents. Uh, if you're referring in particular to uh, our vision for ACS Central Science, we certainly uh, expect and uh, hope to publish a, a papers that are of extreme interest uh, and thus will be highly cited by the, uh, the broad chemistry community and other communities that interface with, with uh, the chemistry uh, community. We don't um, set out to create a high impact factor journal or mold papers. You don't go looking to publish papers trying to chase an impact factor. The impact factor is simply the, the ratio of citations in a given period to the number of papers that you publish. But we certainly anticipate that this will be among the more highly cited uh, uh, journals that ACS uh, publishes uh, among joining a, a very established and uh, select group of, of uh, existing journals, uh, including, of course, uh, our flagship journal, the Journal of the American Chemical Society. Dal, did you want to add anything else to that? That covers it. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Uh, next question. Um, in terms of enhancing global access and connectivity for chemistry, nothing would beat inclusion of CAS numbers, pub chem CIDs, and chem spider IDs for all structures specified by authors. Okay, I can take that one. Um, we are clearly in the very early requirements gathering stage for ACS Central Science, and uh, we are taking all feedback and looking at all options at this point. One of the really exciting things about ACS publications is that our, our journals are all community driven. The community tells us that there's a need or an opportunity for a journal. We um, do some research and you know, uh, evaluate that. We reach out to the community. Uh, including our, all of the editors of our journals to gather support before we move ahead. And then actually the selection of the editor of the journal is handled by uh, the community members. So we comprise a team of leading community members in, uh, that's appropriate for the, a particular journal. And the research active scientists are the ones who say to ACS and make a recommendation to our board of directors that this is the person who should lead this journal. Furthermore, we, we monitor and evaluate our journal by reaching out regularly to the community for feedback. So, so that's an exciting opportunity at ACS to really be a community-driven journal. And that's what we see for ACS Central Science. So you know, we appreciate the feedback, and we'll be looking to see how much more of that we get from the community as we move ahead. Okay, thank you, Darla. Uh, last question from the registration page. Um, 
what percentage of authors are opting to pay a fee for open access to your journals? Well, I would say we, we have a much lower um, uptake than, than we see at some other publishers. So the chemistry community has certainly not jumped up for open access in the way that other communities might have done so. So you know, we have uh, less than 5% of our authors taking up open access at this time. Part of why we wanted to revisit our program this year really is to ensure that we're meeting and we're providing options. So even though it's not a big percentage right now, we see the funder mandates changing and government mandates emerging. And we want to be that full partner for our ACS authors, uh, you know, regardless of what their needs are. And so if their needs are for open access, we want to be there as a full partner. Well, I'm going to uh, uh, give a, a, another uh, thought on that. Um, uh, yes, it's, it's not been a high uptake. As we mentioned during the webcast, we, we began offering author choice, ACS author, author choice, in 2006. Um, the figures that I had were that about 1% of authors since that time cumulatively have uh, 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 opted for an author choice uh, open access uh, publication. Uh, and that number has been fairly steady since the launch of the of the program. Uh, but I think it, it bears reiterating then that by offering this uh, author rewards voucher program, we are really uh, going out of our way to say to the entire, well, maybe not the entire chemistry community, but certainly every uh, uh, chemistry group that publishes with us that uh, as, a, as an added incentive, uh, as an added bonus to publishing with ACS uh, during the course of 2014, we're going to give you a, uh, a voucher that essentially will g give you the opportunity to experiment with an open access publication at no cost to you uh, at any point over the next three years. So we're really trying to say to the community this program encourages you to at least give open access uh, a try. And if you decide because of the reach of ACS or because there's your community just it hasn't um, uh, uh, seen the benefits, the perceived benefits of open access in the way that some other scientific communities perhaps have, have uh, embraced it, uh, that's totally fine. We're not, we're not trying to uh, twist people's arms to say you must publish open access, but we, we are simply uh, offering now a, a variety of, of mechanisms whereby authors and groups can, uh, can give it a go, and maybe they will say, wow, after, after one experiment, wow, that was brilliant. The, the feedback I got from, from readers and other colleagues who perhaps wouldn't have seen or had access to the paper otherwise has been so spectacularly beneficial for my research that I'm never looking back. I'm going to continue to publish open access, and whether it's through ACS Central Science or other open access journals that, uh, or other mechanisms such as author choice, we, we would like to think that we provide uh, the mechanisms for people to be able to do that. Thank you, Kevin. I'm going to take some questions now from the Q&A box. Uh, the first one, under ACS Author Choice, is the open access after 12 months free, or is it available for $750? Okay, I can take that one. So we offer a variety of options under Author Choice. Authors can pay a fee for immediate access, or they can pay a fee for 12 months access. So the 750 fee that you referenced is for ACS members at all publication subscribing institutions who choose the option of ACS Author Choice Plus 12, so making it free, freely accessible after 12 months. Thank you, Darla. Uh, next question. Do you think the ACS voucher program can also work for funders? Uh, the sum of articles being published by PI, PIs funded by a specific funder will be gathered and can be used for the following three years. No, this is really, so the voucher program is really designed to go directly to the author who publishes. Uh, is it of value to the funders? Absolutely. So the funders are benefiting from the fact that ACS is providing a voucher to an author who publishes uh, their research with us and who is funded by uh, the institution. So I, I think it's, a be it's definitely a benefit to funders, but the voucher itself will go directly to the author, and, we, and we'll be, um, the author will be allowed to use that um, on another publishing option starting January 1st, 2015, 
and they'll be allowed to use it either on a current article or a previously published article. They'll also be allowed um, to give that credit to someone else. So if they wanted to give the information about the credit to another author, say a, a PI wants to give it to a, a younger author who is graduating from his or her institution and moving on and they want to provide them with this resource, they'll be able to do that. The credits, again, are valid from January 1st, 2015 through December 31st, 2017. So a nice three-year period um, to allow the authors to utilize the vouchers. Joe, the only thing I would add to Dala's excellent answer there is that uh, our colleagues at ACS Publications uh, who deal with, with uh, uh, librarians and other funding organizations are in regular contact with, with organizations uh, in North America, Europe, and, and Asia and beyond. Uh, and so uh, I don't know where this question came from or what organization the question represents, but if they would like to contact either Dala or myself offline uh, through the emails uh, that we've given on the screen here, uh, we can certainly uh, follow up with them directly and see if there's anything that they would like to discuss with us in a bit more detail. All right, next question. Are the daily additions to the editor's choice communicated to indexing services so that they can so that they are indicated as open access slash free on their databases so we are marking those with um, a uh, an editor's choice logo and um, we're following of course some of the developments that are going on with NIST as they look to establishing standards for communicating when content is available as open access we um, are also in the process of reaching out to indexing services to make sure that uh, how we handle our content, that it translates through when they, when they can make that available. So we're doing everything that we can to, um, to move forward here and to make sure that however an author finds this content, they're going to know it's open access. I would say the community overall hasn't really settled on standards yet, and we're working to, um, you know, to make that happen as quickly as possible. Okay, next question. ACS Author Rewards. Each author receives no more than two $750 credits per article? Question mark. Is there a limit to how much of a, of a is there a limit to how much of a reward an author can receive? Um, this so authors if they publish one article in 2014 as the corresponding author, they receive the two $750 credits for a total value of $1,500. If they publish 10 articles with ACS in 2014, they would receive 20 $750 credits for a total publishing value of $15,000. So really, um, basically what we're saying is for every article that publishes in 2014, we're giving back to the community, uh, a, re a reward that will allow them to manage and to make available an open access option in the future. And, it's, and that's exactly right. So uh, there's no, no limit uh, on, on corresponding authors. It's not one voucher per year. It's, it's one set of vouchers per paper. Uh, and we anticipate publishing uh, close to 40,000 uh, articles this year. Um, the question says, uh, does each author receive um, credits? Obviously, just to qualify what, we, what Dala mentioned during the webcast, or just to reiterate what she mentioned, uh, the, the vouchers go to the corresponding authors. Some, some many articles these days have more than one corresponding author, so uh, that's why we've split uh, the 1,500 uh, value into two 750 vouchers. But it also allows, uh, these are fully tradable. Usually when you, you know, vouchers and certificates come with uh, you know, only good to the person that they were issued to, uh, not in this case. So if a, 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 a principal investigator, for example, really wants to feels that they, he or she has uh, more vouchers than he knows what to do with, uh, they can uh, f quite, with our blessings, uh, send these or transfer these to group members, uh, international members, uh, colleagues uh, who perhaps had nothing to do with the research to get them to, uh, to uh, give them the advantage of, of using those vouchers for future publications. So they are fully transferable and we have no objections to that whatsoever. Okay, thank you. Next question. What benefits does open access provide to retired chemists who wish to submit a manuscript, such as perspectives or reviews, 
to a specific ACS journal where the retired person has no income to cover publication charges and no longer has any ties to a university. Well, our plan for the new, uh, th th obviously open access will exist in a, in a number of guises uh, starting next year uh, through the, the ACS uh, Author Choice uh, uh, existing program where in principle any article can be uh, rendered uh, open access. But the plan for the new journal, ACS Central Science, is that all of the material, uh, including a healthy variety of uh, what we call front matter, uh, news and views type articles, reviews and commentaries, uh, and so on, with the uh, expressed intent of uh, interpreting and making even more accessible the, uh, the information in the papers that are being published, uh, that will be fully open. So if, uh, if the questioner has uh, 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 ambitions to uh, to write uh, uh, to publish a, a review or some some timely article uh, on some recent research uh, they would certainly as anybody on this call would be invited to uh, contact the editor and uh, and uh, make a proposal to them in addition to central science of course ACS editors choice also makes available one article per year and that's drawn from the entire portfolio of content so um, that does include uh, review type content that's made available. So we, we, you know, that is another opportunity for you as a retired author to take advantage of an offering that, that we're able to provide. Okay, thank you. Next question. How will you manage the competition between ACS Central Science and the existing journals such as Jax. <laughs> I was anticipating that question, Joe. It's a great question, um, and happy to uh, happy to take it on. Uh, I envision that there will be some healthy competition uh, between ACS Central Science, Jax, just as there is, and Jax, just as there is now between Jax and many of the other uh, uh, more high-profile journals uh, within. Uh, within uh, the ACS uh, publishing um, uh, portfolio. Uh, you can't tell the editor of ACS Synthetic Biology or ACS Nano or the Journal of Physical Chemistry or any of our other journals that they uh, can't uh, or shouldn't go after the very best papers um, that they, they, can, they can try to uh, uh, recruit or solicit or, or, or review during the course of uh, their normal review processes and that's what they do that's what they the best editors do day in day out whether uh, at conferences or, or just in their own universities or through other communications uh, I think they're all excited and proud to be editors of journals and all uh, eager to uh, see the uh, reputation and prestige of their journals climb as, as high as it possibly can and uh, nobody tells them to, uh, to uh, that uh, simply because we have a, a journal that we refer to as the flagship journal that they must uh, uh, somehow uh, bow down before that. Uh, and I, similarly, the editor of uh, the Journal of the American Chemical Society, the great Peter Stang, has made it very clear to us that um, he has no intention of... Uh, of, uh, of uh, seeding any of his uh, high-quality papers uh, published in JAX uh, to, uh, to the, the, the new journal that we plan to launch next year, uh, no matter what sort of final scope and format and, uh, it, it ends up having. So I think healthy competition is a good thing. Uh, we hope that the launch of this new journal will be one, yet one more means by which we can encourage more groups and more researchers to visit ACS, perhaps groups who don't even consider themselves first and foremost as chemists, but will come to give ACS uh, publications a try. Uh, they will be impressed, I have no doubt, by the quality of our peer review and the uh, unparalleled speed of, uh, of, of, of both of peer review and our production uh, teams, uh, the, the speed from acceptance to publication, which I think is pretty much unmatched in the, uh, in, the, in the publishing world. And all of those uh, attributes will be uh, certainly on display when we launch ACS Central Science. Um, and as I say, the f finally, just to reiterate a point that I made earlier, that we, we, until we can appoint and announce uh, the founding editor of ACS Central Science and really lay out for the community precisely what the scope is, I think the precise um, interrelationship between ACS Central Science and the other journals that ACS publishes uh, remains a little bit of a, of a, of a, uh, a, little bit of a black box until, until those details are ironed out. One final thing I would add, 
is that uh, uh, we there's been quite a lot of talk lately about uh, 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 Portability of peer review. Uh, it's something that we are thinking hard about here. Um, we do, do not wish to inconvenience authors if they submit to, to JAX or ACS Central Science um, and their papers are uh, deemed um, uh, are turned down on editorial grounds, so perhaps of not being in the, in the eyes of the editor or the reviewers of having sufficient uh, uh, scope or impact for those specific journals. Uh, we don't want to wish to inconvenience uh, those authors. And if there is another journal within our group that could provide a suitable home for that publication, uh, we would like to facilitate that. And I think the launch of ACS Central Science will certainly accelerate uh, those discussions uh, here at ACS headquarters in Washington, D.C. and with our journal editors. Okay, great. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Darla. That's all the time we have. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you gained a lot of useful information about the open access offerings available from ACS in 2014. A reminder that this webinar will be archived and will be available for you or your colleagues to watch again within 72 hours at the link we provided you via email. I'd like to also point out that at the URL at the bottom of the screen, www.acsopenaccess.org, you can now find uh, frequently asked questions available on those pages. So thank you for your attention and goodbye.